On this edition of Around BCC, Bristol Community College is gearing up for its first extensive capital fundraising campaign. Graduates who attend UMass Dartmouth may see a reduction in tuition. And we look at how technology is playing a role in the gathering of forensic evidence. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. All activities and academic programs are fully underway as we're in the month of October, fall semester of 2014. You know, we've talked a lot on the program over the past few months about the exciting new additions, physical additions at Bristol Community College's Fall River Campus, the construction of the Sprega Health and Sciences Building. The uh, project is uh, going to be uh, taking $27 million of state funds through a bond uh, initiative to build the building. But BCC and the BCC Foundation in particular is also playing an active role in helping to support what will uh, be the future activities of the Sprague Health and Sciences Building. And we're going to talk about the capital campaign that's being undertaken by the BCC Foundation. I'm joined by three guests. First, Elizabeth McCarthy. She's the Vice President of Resource Development at Bristol Community College and the co-chairs of the capital campaign, uh, Patrick Murray from uh, Bristol County Savings Bank mm -hmm. and Nick Chris from Bay Coast Bank. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Liz, let me uh, ask you first, how did the capital cam campaign come about and what was the need for it, I guess? Okay, well, um, the college decided with the help of a bond bill that we would build the new health and science building. Um, the Board of Trustees decided to name the building after President Spraga. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, we realized that we had so much money to build the actual building and we needed to um, fund the inside of the building. So right. we decided with the help of the foundation, we would launch a capital campaign, which would include the furniture, fixtures, and equipment within the John J. Spraga Health and Science Building, and we would also branch out to focus on some of the other s service areas that BCC has. And so it's created a BCC first ever capital campaign, and we've launched it after groundbreaking, which was which was in May. You know, the the college has has undertaken in the foundation a number of campaigns, fundraising for scholarships mm -hmm. and, and other and other uh, priorities here at the college. But this is the first capital campaign. How different is this in terms of what you're doing at the foundation compared to other campaigns that the foundation has undertaken? Well, I think we're focusing on all of the service areas, which include Attleboro, Taunton, New Bedford, and Fall River. We will raise money um, for, all, for all of the needs within those areas. So we have the building here, which is in Fall River, but we also have other needs at all of the other locations. And we want to bring in all of our donors within those regions, and we focus on those areas that service those areas. So we'll be more apt to get more donations because we're focusing on certain and specific um, uh, projects mm -hmm. within those buildings and within those service areas. So there's a capital campaign committee and yes. these two gentlemen are the co-chairs. Our co-chairs Could, are Couldn't Pat have asked Nick. for better co-chairs. We I'm couldn't sure. have asked for better co-chairs. Pat, let me Thanks. ask you first from, uh, <laughs> from Bristol County Savings Bank. How did you get involved? I, I, I heard you speak at a professional day event earlier uh, this semester about your involvement. Share with the community how you got involved and why it's important to you to be involved. Sure, I've been involved with the foundation for probably about five or six I years now. In mm. fact, I'm the immediate past chair of the foundation. So uh, coming off as chair, I thought uh, the work was over until uh, <laughs> Jack and Liz approached me a few months ago about uh, co-chairing uh, the uh, capital campaign with Nick. So um, what always interested you about being involved with BCC and the foundation? Well, it's actually, it's uh, you know, throughout Bristol County. Uh, obviously, Bristol County Savings Bank is involved throughout Bristol County, and uh, I got involved just as we were developing the new Attleboro campus, um, and then uh, came down here to the Fall River in New Bedford, as well as Taunton, and uh, happy to say that uh, we're opening our new facility in Taunton, and uh, we can truly say that we are uh, Bristol That's Community okay. College now because we're in all four major cities. And Nick, what interested you about getting involved in the campaign? Well. Um, from uh, Bay Coast Bank's perspective, they've always been a strong supporter um, and advocate for education. Mm. <clears throat> and certainly, um, Bristol Community College over the years has uh, garnered the reputation of uh, just an outstanding educational facility. And it's a tremendous resource, uh, not just locally anymore, but for the entire county. And um, uh, we need to be a part of that. We feel that education is uh, one of the primary economic uh, movers in um, 
if we want to see our community continue to develop, uh, the economy develop, we need to be a supporter of education. And uh, that's really, I think, in a nutshell, why we feel so strongly about supporting BCC. Now, Liz, as we record this portion of the program, campaign is, is pretty much just beginning in its beginning stages of, of, of being launched and, and underway. We're technically in our silent phase. S <laughs> silent yet on cable TV. Yeah, <laughs> not silent so anymore. So I don't know how it's silent that is. <laughs> well, let, let me just tell you how, how have been some of the early results. <clears throat> I know these two gentlemen have made generous donations on behalf of their organization. So yes. how's it looked thus far? We've raised um, over two million dollars for the campaign. We had some lead gifts from Bacos Bank and Bristol County Savings Bank and I think they spearheaded the um, excitement of the campaign. There were others within the community that have kind of latched on mm. and we're really getting the word out and people are excited about the new building and they're excited about you know, the projects that we have planned. So it's, and we're using John, Jack Sprague's name so that's an easy sell in and of itself. I want to talk about that now. What, what's going to happen going forward about making this a little more public? We're hopefully helping in that endeavor to bring awareness to the campaign to the people who view this program, but what are some of the other steps that the foundation is taking to, you know, further launch the campaign? And if there are some deadlines that people need to be aware of, why don't you yeah, share some of that? Yeah, we have several subcommittees, um, uh, prospect committees, where we're getting our list together. We're setting up one-on-one -on -one meetings, and we have we've only scratched the surface sure. with our gifts. So we have a long way to travel to get to all of our our donors and some of our our local service areas. But we're making some headway. So we've created we've created our cabinet well first of all we had our chairs then we created our cabinet mm -hmm. then we have a lot of subcommittees that we're working on and those subcommittees will help um, gear some of our one-on-one face-to-face -on -one meetings we need some of our promotional material which needs to be developed some videos so there's excitement generated around the campaign and we're getting there but we're st it's still work in progress now will the campaign go through just the completion the, the time period of the completion of the building or is there, uh, maybe too soon to ask this, but could it even go further? Because as you said, there's needs at all the campuses for improvements. Right, and improvements. I think we're not going to stop until we get there. And if we raise more money than, than our ultimate goal, then great. And we're going to keep going until people stop giving us money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask the two of you gentlemen uh, about the reputation of Bristol Community College. Uh, for those mm -hmm. of us who work here, uh, those of us who've been here for any period of time know the cachet that BCC brings to this to this region. Mm -hmm. From your community uh, perspective and from the people you speak with, and Pat, I guess I'll start with sure. you, um, how does that bode well for the success of this campaign? Sure. Um, well, I think, as Nick mentioned, education is important. And uh, when you go around uh, Bristol County and you talk about education, the one thing that you really hear is affordable education. And what better way to, to have kids graduate from high school and then to go on to further their education. Uh, even if they can't afford to go to a, a private college or even a public college, um, th the reputation that Bristol Community College has uh, and the fact that people can get their associate's degrees here and then move on to a, uh, another four-year college, the reputation is excellent. And uh, it, it, is a, uh, it is an asset for our community and we want to continue to help to, to make sure it's an asset going forward. Nick, you want to add anything? Yeah, just quickly. <clears throat> Their uh, reputation isn't just regional. It's really, uh, I think, a, a reputation now that's been recognized statewide. When we, and Pat would attest to this, when we attend um, uh, meetings that are more uh, statewide, uh, Bristol Community College is always recognized as being a, a, a community college that, that excels. Mm. So it has a tremendous reputation statewide. Mm. Liz, I know that there's going to be more information soon about how the general public can get involved, how other uh, companies and organizations in our region can, can contribute. But one of the things that I know was talked about um, to the employees here earlier uh, in the semester was the fact that getting employees, faculty, staff, um, even students involved in contributing. And I know the month of October is going to be a key time for maybe asking some of the people who work here to contribute to the campaign. Can you right. talk about that? Sure. November 6th is National Philanthropic um, Day, so we're launching a, an employee 
faculty and staff giving campaign and mm -hmm. Pat actually spoke about that at our opening day right. and our goal is to get 100% participation. It doesn't matter about the dollar amount but we want everybody to be engaged in this campaign in some way shape or form. So after Pat's presentation we were able to receive at least 15 um, employee payroll deduction forms so I think mm -hmm. it was as a result of Pat really getting to the audience but oftentimes when we're out asking folks for money the first things they ask us are what do your boards give and what do your employees mm -hmm. give and if we can't say with confidence hundred percent then why should they be giving so mm -hmm. that's what we're really trying to work on our internal donor base and work with our faculty and staff and um, try to get them involved in the campaign as well. And that'll be pushed throughout the month of October? Yes, throughout current? the month of October, um, we're having a donor love day um, so folks can get involved and we can honor our donors and have students really recognize um, who these donors are and why it's important that they give and they show their appreciation for the gifts that we receive from them. And I'm sure soon thereafter there'll be you know more public announcements on how the community at large can be absolutely can be, can be uh, giving to this to this campaign to this campaign so, as we make our rounds. Yes. Sure. Well, I want to thank the three of you for joining mm -hmm. us. Um, it's an, an ambitious task you're undertaking, <laughs> but you're off to a good start. We're Two off million to a good dollars start. is a, is a real real good start for this campaign. And uh, thank you uh, for joining us and, uh, and all the best. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for having you. us. Yeah. We'll have more of around BCC right after this. Feel great. <laughs> yeah, excited. It's the uh, end of uh, the finish line for nursing school, <laughs> but we made it. <laughs> I'm so happy to see my family with me too, and I'm so happy to see my family happy. Uh, my name is uh, Hannah Fauzi. I am here at uh, Bristol Community College. I just graduated from uh, BCC nursing program. I'm originally from uh, Egypt. Uh, I immigrated from Egypt back in the 2000. I lived here in forever for four years and I heard about the BCC nursing program. College for nurse didn't like sound for me like sound weird at the beginning <laughs> because like nurses in Egypt they don't any anybody can be a nurse because nurse has no role in my country. Nurse here I would say it is great experience because it has like a holistic care for the patient and they found that like uh, something close to, uh, to whatever I was doing in Egypt so I joined the program and I heard it is, uh, has a very good reputation around everybody knows BCC and everybody knows the graduate from BCC uh, is the best of the best first when I heard about it e-health it didn't make sense to me like so how is he gonna make the hands on and it is online. Then I went to ask about uh, more information. They told me it's only the lecture, it is online, which you give you the convenient to listen to the lecture at any time. But uh, the other two days clinically have to be in the hospital. And I had uh, like more than a thousand apply, so, uh, so it was tough. Then getting in the program, so it was a great experience. What's next step for me uh, after uh, I'm going to pass uh, my uh, board exam, finding a job, then joining uh, UMass Dartmouth for uh, Doctor of Nurse program. It is the end of the road, you know. <laughs> you plan to go through a road, you know, and you made it to, to the end, you know. It is the end of the bridge. You started to go through the bridge and you came to the finish line. So <laughs> you have that. <laughs>
Students should get all the facts as to what the benefit entails. You know, sometimes people get a little confused about the fact that when you say free tuition, you think you're getting a free ride to UMass Dartmouth. That's not the case. It's free tuition. It's a tuition waiver, actually. Um, but students are still responsible for fees. So uh, even though it is, a, it is a good benefit, it doesn't take care of the whole package, you know. So we're trying to get the word out. We're going to be sending out targeted emails to students who are in transfer programs. We're putting the information in our transfer event calendar that we send out to students. We're going to be sending out uh, more emails to faculty and staff and advisors so that they can start to get the word out. Believe me, it doesn't take long to get the word out about saving money, so I don't think that's going to be a big problem for us. The new transfer agreement is a win not only for BCC students, but for UMass Dartmouth as well. I think they're really trying to get the word out there that they're committed to transfer students and they're interested in transfer students and they want to really try to recruit those students because you know, generally speaking, um, Keith, they're not really taking that big of a chance on a transfer student because that student already has a demonstrated college credit. You know, they've already demonstrated that they can do college level work and the average GPA of students who transfer to UMass Dartmouth is 3.0. So they're getting great students and they want to get more students. So this is a great incentive. There are more money-saving transfer options for BCC students other than the one from UMass Dartmouth. For more information, visit the Transfer Affairs website at bristolcc.edu slash transfer. Science, technology, engineering, and math, known as the STEM fields, are gaining greater focus across many of the curriculums here at BCC. Recently, the college played host to a workshop on how technology is making it easier for those who seek evidence in court cases. David Papagiris works for a firm which specializes in using technology in gathering evidence for criminal, civil, and administrative court cases. He says the field of forensics has grown exponentially over the last 10 to 15 years, coinciding with the advancements in technology. I believe the uh, new stats out today are that uh, there's over 7 billion mobile devices worldwide now. So everywhere you go, there's a mobile device, GPSs in cars, in cell phones. So any crime or any civil case usually involves some type of digital evidence that has to be properly collected and properly preserved in order to benefit the clients on either side of the case. Papagira says the technology in our pockets now possesses information which could be considered evidence in a civil or criminal investigation. The criminal justice field has seen a huge increase in the not only digital evidence, but in the use of social media and all to help and assist in solving crimes and getting evidence of crimes. So it's, it started basically in the criminal justice field. Now it's gone into more of a, a civil and criminal side. The current construction projects across the Fall River campus are being undertaken with the added benefit of making the college more energy efficient. But sustainability is not just limited to conserving energy resources. As you'll see next, one student farmer is raising livestock in a sustainable manner. One day it just hit me. I was like, I want to be a sustainable farmer and try to provide, uh, you know, quality nutrient dense food to my community. Uh, we have sheep, a couple goats, and some ducks. What we're trying to do is teach people about how to get that quality of food and it all really begins with how you raise your products, whether it's plants or animals. In the case of Scott Peeps, he's raising animals in a healthy way. His chickens are grazing out in open pasture. Uh, he supplements with some grain that he, he buys specially for them that's not chemically treated and genetically modified. So the chickens are happy, they're healthy, they do what chickens normally like to do, and so they produce healthier eggs. We probably have like 90 or so hens and about 15 ducks, which also produce eggs that we sell. A lot of the advertising I do is through the Facebook and, and through family and word of mouth. And then we got into the Westport Farmers Market, which we've, we've been doing pretty well. So we've been, we've been selling there. I mean, they, they look the same. The eggs that he's selling look just like the eggs that you buy in the supermarket. And so you would tend to think, oh, well, they're the same thing because they look the same, but they're not the same thing at all. The contents inside are very different. 
The nutritional level is very different. The chemistry is very different. The benefits for your health are very different. Free range to me and to local farmers is our birds get to eat grass, bugs. They get to, do, they get to be a chicken. We, like people say, oh, do you treat your stuff humanely? I don't treat my stuff humanely. I, I treat it like a chicken. You know, obviously I have a little bit of, you know, control because I'm, you know, I'm trying to produce a product. So they get to live their life, you know, closer to the way they want to. That in itself will, will create a, ha you know, healthier product. We welcome correspondent Angie Hillsman and intern Denise Pumaguaye, who are resurrecting our student segment of the show for this semester. This month, they take a look at some of the new online resources available for BCC students. Hi, I'm Angela Hillsman here with Student to Student, and today we're discussing the new online resources available to BCC students. Kayla DeRosia starts by showing us how to open access BCC on the new website, which is one way to connect to your college email account. All right, so over here, just like normal, your Access BCC, you're going to go ahead and you're just going to log in. Over here is going to be a little blurb telling you that your old email is still active and you can still get it by going to this email icon. With going there, that will open up any old email that you had, but we want to show you the new Office 365 email that we'll be using this semester. So you're going to click on the email tab and you're going to use this little blue link that says the student email login page. Once you click on this link, it's going to bring you to Office 365. Office 365, you do not have to activate it. As soon as you've registered for a class as of fall 2014, you have been registered and set up an account for Office 365. So there's no need to activate all. You already have it. You just have to go ahead and sign into it. What you're going to do is you're going to sign in with the email address that the school has given you. So if you are a returning student, you now have the at bristolcc.edu. We're going to go ahead and sign in you won't come to the Outlook right away. You'll come up to a, uh, a main page. So to get to your mail, you would just click your Outlook tab. This will go ahead and open your Outlook. DeRoges adds that students can opt to either download select Microsoft programs or access them online for free. Download them on up to five devices by clicking Settings, 365 Settings, Software, and then Install. As long as you're a registered student, you'll still have access to your install on your computer. Um, same thing with the Outlook. Before we used to allow students to use this email system, even though they've graduated, they're alumni, they no longer will have that opportunity. Uh, so as soon as you're done, you've graduated, you know you're not coming back, it would be a good choice to maybe back up some of your email, back up anything on your OneDrive. You have a terabyte of storage to save online. So this basically is your little online, I call it like an online type thumb drive. So you could write your report at home, upload it, come to class, print it out, and it's there. Uh, so if you want to upload, you just hit the upload button. But say you want to, you know, you're at home, you don't want to install it on your computer, and you want to write a document. You can go ahead, hit the new button, and you have the option to select a Word document. You can create an Excel worksheet or a Power, PowerPoint, or do a OneNote um, notebook. Oh, another actually good thing is the fact that you can now sync up your email to your phone. The only downfall I have with Office 365 is it's in the cloud. Uh, if you do delete it, there's no way to recover it. For more information, you can call the college with the extension 2119 or visit our IT friends in room K130 on the Fall River campus. BCC is celebrating its fifth year of the One Book Project, the common reader program where multiple classes use the same book as part of its curriculum. This year's One Book is I Am Malala, the story of a Pakistani girl who was persecuted and shot by the Taliban for pursuing an education. One Book Project committee organizer Susan Souza Mort says I Am Malala has an impact across a number of academic disciplines, from education to history to the health sciences. I think the appeal of it is that it's actually very current. It's something that just happened several years ago. We're also hearing in the media constantly about the Taliban, about terrorism at large. Now we have not Taliban per se, but ISIS or ISIL. And um, it really also focuses on, we, get, we have at BCC a lot of students who come from many different countries, and a lot of them are fleeing, just like Malala, from political persecution, wars, seeking a better life, seeking access to education. Um, I think that's really what made it appealing to us and to the 
the community as, at large. The process of selecting the 2015 One Book will begin later this semester with nominations to the committee and then a campus-wide vote on the finalist sometime in the spring. Last month, we took a look at the 2014 BCC men's soccer team. This month, we focus on the women's squad. The Lady Bees enter the new season with a bit of momentum, winning their first match last year and returning a committed core of players. Head coach David Berube says he likes to instill in his players a sense of teamwork with no pressure and a focus on life's priorities. They should be putting school first. Some of them work, so that they need to do to pay for school. Some of them have families. You know, some of them actually have kids, um, so that comes first. And then we try to fit the soccer in. So I don't put a lot of pressure on them that they need to be here every day and doing it all. I mean, I, we want them to be here. The team has been more successful uh, in the past three years. I mean, last year we actually won our first game, um, which was a big uh, monument thing for the, for the team. So, uh, you know, like I said, we really want them to come out here, try their best when they are here, when they can be here. The Lady Bees have gotten off to a good start, opening their season at 1-3. and three. The men's squad has also held its own in the opening weeks of the year, also garnering a record of 1-3. and three. Both teams have a slew of home games in October. Check out the BCC website for days and times of the matches, which are held at Bishop Connolly High School. That's all for Around BCC this month. You have until the middle of October to check out the Structures and Machines exhibit at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery in Fall River. We leave you with a look at some of that artwork. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.